here, uh, Pastor Carlos, I want to share just kind of what God taught us. First, uh, before I get into that, if Anthony, if you could pull up, uh, I just want to kind of let you all get a, a look at a few pictures just to kind of get a feel for where we were before we uh, kind of dive into what God taught us. So first picture here is just a, a group of, there was 25 of us that went on the trip, mostly from central Kentucky, um, several folks that used to be here at Safe Harbor um, several years ago, uh, Brian Proctor, who was a former youth pastor here, uh, kind of headed up the trip. And then uh, Brittany Mills, as well, was on the trip with us. And then, so quite a few from Frankfurt and then Georgetown area. And then we had several from uh, Kansas City and North Carolina and uh, Atlanta. So this was all of us kind of the first night there sitting at the, uh, the dinner table in the hotel. So if you want to go on. This is uh, Pastor Carlos, hard at work. Uh, breaking up rocks. Right. So we uh, we dug some fence, uh, some fence post holes so they could uh, have a, a fence to, they want to eventually have some animals there to be a little bit more self-sustaining. So we built those things and then also like a shelter um, for animals to, to go in. So she can go there. This is a, a group of the, uh, the younger kids. They had two houses. One was for older kids, one was for younger kids in two different locations. One was right in the middle of the city of a million people where we were. And this is kind of out in the country a little bit more. And this was the group of the younger kids. And they were, I think here's, they're, they're praying. And, uh, you know, to hear five and six-year-olds pray um, very profound, like, gospel-centered prayers was pretty amazing. You know, Carlos got a first-hand view because they were mostly praying in Spanish. But I would always ask them afterward, you know, what were they praying for? And, uh, you know, they were able to, to really um, to pray some, some pretty, you know, pretty good prayers for little kids and, uh, definitely, you know, challenged me to, as a parent, to you know, teach my kids to pray, um, because they have obviously been taught and it's heartfelt and genuine as well. So, this is Carlos and I last Sunday. Um, so this time, about this time last Sunday, we were out. We had an outdoor worship service at at the property where the, the kids live. So I preached in English. And he translated me in Spanish. We did kind of a line-by-line -line thing because half of our congregation was English-speaking, half was Spanish-speaking. So it was a neat, neat opportunity just to see how big God is um, and that he transcends uh, nationalities, he transcends ethnicities and uh, languages, and to be able to worship together um, with them. And then afterwards, I preached on uh, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples and then after that was over, we washed the, the feet of the, the children and workers there and just kind of a visible display of uh, not you know us trying to mimic Jesus, but just the, the servanthood that Christ modeled for us and his humility. Um, and then the fact that we are now called to walk in that and, and to live as servants, as humble servants in this world. So it was, it was a really uh, cool experience to be able to do that. Go ahead, Anthony. And this is, uh, we went, one of the things we did was go to a garbage dump for the city where people actually live. Um, they live in this garbage dump and collect whatever they can to live off of out of it. So there's probably two or three hundred people that live in this garbage dump. And so we went and took food and just some basic supplies to them. And Carlos was able to share a, a brief uh, message of hope, a message of the gospel um, with them, and, and you could really, uh, several people commented on our trip about how the people were really tuned in to what he was saying. You know, they're used to people coming in and having to have translators and, and things like that, but this was a native Spanish-speaking person who was uh, preaching God's Word to them, and uh, it was a, honestly, it was a very powerful moment for me to just kind of sit back and observe. I mean, I was like, man, Carlos, you need to get up and do that this Sunday here at uh, Safe Harbor. You know, he was very passionate and very, he had to be loud because, you know, there's, they were outside and, and so uh, it was just the, the whole situation was a very powerful moment and uh, praying that, you know, it, it bears fruit ultimately in their lives um, as they heard that message. Go ahead, Anthony. And this is a uh, trash dump as we were leaving. I don't even see, but there's actually a family walking up this pile of trash, um, like little kids and their parents. I have this, this image kind of burned in my mind of uh, a mother and the kids out in front and the mother and the father kind of with their arms around each other walking up behind the kids. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a, a humbling thing to see a family do that. And that's this is where they live. And yet there's still that, that family unit 
aspect even in that place. Um, and so you can see them kind of climbing up that uh, trash pile there. Go ahead, Anthony. And then from the trash dump, we went to another really impoverished area in the town called, uh, basically they call them the river homes. And basically people just live in shacks along this river and they live kind of off the river, which is a very polluted, unclean river. But they, they kind of live off the river and, and gather whatever they can. So we also delivered food, New Testaments in Spanish, um, and basic, basic supplies um, for them as well. So you can kind of see us. We just followed the truck and pulled bags out of that truck and handed it to people as we walked along this kind of dirt road um, where these people lived. So very, very humbling experience. Go ahead. And this was uh, the last day, just a picture of the whole group. Uh, most of the kids that we ministered to in the orphanage are in that picture. A few of the older ones weren't able to be there because they had school that day. But um, that's kind of our group of uh, the adults and, and the team and the workers and, and the kids. So uh, in the background, it was a very pretty um, place where, out in the country where they had this, this orphanage and, and school set up. You can see kind of the mountains in the background. Um, the city... Uh, city uh, location wasn't quite that nice, but it, it was okay. So uh, I was kind of a, I think it's the last last picture I had. Is that the last one, Anthony? Is that the last picture? Okay. Yeah, so that's just kind of a, a you know, kind of gives you a, a visual of what we were doing while we were there. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you for allowing us to go and miss a week here to be able to go on this mission trip. I had the uh, the great privilege of being able to preach to an audience of 10,000 last Sunday, all right, and, and Carlos as well. Now, uh, I didn't say 10,000 people, all right, I had 10,000. In fact, there was a chicken farm across the street with about 10,000. I'm serious, like, you, you come out of the van and you hear these chickens. And so uh, there was about 10,000 chickens, about 65 people, um, and so we had, a, we had a great opportunity to do that. Um, Again, we were with an organization called 127 Worldwide, which is a, an advocacy group for orphans and widows worldwide. And so they partner with uh, people in Africa, Haiti, South, or Central America, and, and other places as well. And so that was the group we were with. They partnered, in, uh, they partnered with, in Honduras, a place called Hogar Esperanza, which means Hope House. And it is basically a, a home for abandoned, abused, orphaned children. Um, and they take in these children, they, they let them live there, Basically, they function kind of as a family unit, and then they also um, have a school that where they can give these kids a Christian education. And I'm very impressed with uh, just how gospel centered the education was. Like the kids knew the gospel, um, and just how they quoted Psalm one thirty one for us. Um, they kind of did a little program, you know, to send us off and. You know, I wonder how many of us in this room can quote a single chapter of Scripture. And these were, you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds. So very challenging to see that, and at the same time encouraging, because we were really going there to support them, right? The role of this trip was to support a work that is already going on that is effectively reaching people for Christ and to give them resources to better be able to do that. Um, you know, I think a lot of times when we think of mission trips, we think about, well, we're going to parachute in, we're going to talk to these people, and then we're going to leave. And then what happens afterwards? You know, a lot of times we don't know. Here we know that these people, these kids are going to be ministered to effectively on an ongoing basis. And that's what I really liked about this, is you're partnering with a local ministry that's also connected to a local church that is going to continue the ministry to these children and to these workers and adults. And so um, that, that's what we're about, right? Here at Safe Harbor, we're about making disciples, not just about making converts. We want people to, to really know what it means to follow Christ, and, and this organization does that. And so uh, a few things just that I want to take a minute to reflect on, and what I saw, what, I, what God taught me. And the first thing was just the, the vast need in the world, right? There's a vast need in the world physically, and we saw that. You saw that in, in the trash dump and in uh, the river homes. Um, and just a lot of poverty. It's a third, third world country. Um, but even more than the physical needs is the, the depth of spiritual need in the world. You know, there, there's a lot of... Uh, in Honduras, it's interesting. You see a lot of Jesus bumper stickers and signs on the windows, but it's all kind of like this um, magical, uh, mystical thing. Like if you put Jesus' name on my car... I'm going to be safe. Or I'm not going to have a car accident or something. Um, and, and so there's not really a depth of faith. It's more just like a, 
uh, a good luck charm or something like that. And so we, we were just reminded of the, the depth of spiritual need in the world. When we see beyond Georgetown or beyond Kentucky, and you see, look, there are millions around the world, billions around the world, who don't know Christ. Um, second thing we see is the importance of, uh, or I saw, it was impressed on me this week, was the importance of gospel partnerships. All right, uh, here on this trip, we had at least that I can think of the workers that went, the people on the team that went from four different denominations uh, working together, and we worked with another denomination down there. And so being able to partner with other, other denominations that are like-minded, that emphasize the gospel, um, you see the importance of how we can work together. Um, for the sake of Christ and for the sake of reaching people with him. And we need that support from one another, right? If we try to live on an island and not have partnerships in the gospel, then we're going to be much less effective than if we partner with like-minded brothers and sisters who have that same mission. And so this was a, a great opportunity to see that in, in motion. Third thing I saw is just that how, how God never ceases to amaze me to meet needs when it's needed most. And so, so the story of the Hope House where we went is a story of a place that really God provided everything. And God provided the property uh, at both locations, debt-free. God provided the workers. God provided the, the kids that needed. And he provided the way to care for those kids. And so we, we just saw uh, time after time how God met needs perfectly. Because God is a God who is abundantly giving to us who seek to follow him. And so uh, we, we saw just his grace poured out and how he met needs in that place. And he does the same in our lives, doesn't he? He meets us where we are. And then uh, the fourth thing we saw is just how a personal investment in children can make a difference. All right, these, we, you see this kind of, this orphanage kind of functioning as a family unit. And they were really investing in these kids. And you see that the progression of faith um, and where a lot of these kids that were in high school, one of them was recently baptized, I think in March, and how that investment really pays dividends in the end. And so for us, I'm thinking, well, how does that apply to us? Well, we as a church family, like, we have the opportunity to invest in children, right? Um, a personal investment, not just like an arm's length uh, distance investment in children where I see them and then they're gone. No, this was like an ongoing, like, let's get in their lives, let's encourage them, let's teach them. Um, and we have the opportunity to do that here as well if we are willing to kind of take that step. And, and you know, whether it's your family or whether it's just kids in the church here, now you have an opportunity to do that. And we see that investment in children, but really investment in any people is worth it, right, in the end. Uh, as we seek to make disciples, as we seek to share Christ and how he meets them where they are. And then the, the last thing I just want to share is... Um, the importance of community. I mean, I talked a little bit about that, but you know, there's 25 people on this trip, and, and Carlos will probably talk a little bit more about this, but just the encouragement that we were able to receive from each other, uh, having the same mission, praying for each other, some, some pretty significant things that happened in several people's lives on the trip. One, one girl on the trip lost her job while she was there. Um, another, Brian Proctor, actually had to come home because of family, um, some pretty serious family issues with his children, and so... Um, just to see us come alongside each other and pray for each other in those needs in that moment. Um, like we need that community with each other. We need to, this shouldn't just be happen on a mission trip. It should happen right here, every day among us. Um, and so uh, that was just something else that was really impressed on me. So Pastor Carlos, if you want to share a few thoughts, bear with him. I think he's got a bit of a cold. So I haven't recovered yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just... Thinking back, you know, when Andy said uh, he, there were a lot of things in the trip, but the thing I got most was community. As we were there, I was reading a book about community, and, and I was seeing it like in front of my eyes. I was uh, reading what I was seeing in front of my eyes. And the fact that the children uh, were raised in a community, in a family community, where they were treated as children, as son and daughters, not just as an orphan, you know, and they were loved that way, and ate meals together, and hang out to get put together, they live together all the time. That showed how it changes lives. It's not just feeding them with information, it's living with them, it's, it's teaching them, it's, it's being an example to them. And I also saw that in our community that we became, that while we were there, we, we, the fellow missionaries were all, many of us from different denominations and different places, uh, but yet we became one unit and there was so much 
just help and love between us and, and so much communication without saying a word, you know, like if somebody was working, doing something, and they had to go do something else, somebody would just go and fill in. You didn't have to ask, they would just fill in. And I felt that was because we were, we were like a family. We were working as a community together. And we were eating our meals together. We were sleeping, in a sense, all in the same place. And, and, and in the same band, all smelly and sweaty, you know, together. And always together. And that created within like one day, it created a huge bond between us. And what I got most out of that was that I think Andy, is, he's trying to do that for the church, to these gospel communities that we're starting. I think that is the goal that we become a family, that we are a unit, that we love each other as brothers and sisters, and that we don't see each other as, as people, but as, as just fellow family members who, who would give our shirts off to each other, need be, or fill in when there's a hole. We all have been asked. So I, I just encourage you to, to become a part of that, because if you're not, this trip, this trip confirmed to me, you're missing out on what walking with Christ is. It's not just showing up at church on Sunday. It's not just doing the programs or, or reading your Bible in a legalistic way. It's, it's living. It's literally living like Christ lived among his disciples. And that's how he taught them. So I'll stop preaching now. Uh, but I just encourage you guys to, to join a, a gospel community group. Take it seriously. And maybe you'll see this too that we saw down there. All right, well, thanks for letting us just take a moment to, to share. Thanks for your prayers while we were gone. Um, and uh, let me just encourage you all, as we have opportunities in the future, to be on mission trips, to uh, you know, consider going on a mission trip, because that, it definitely does give you a different perspective on, on the world around us and how God calls us to, to live where we are and what God wants to, to do in our lives. And so um, if you've been on a mission trip, you know that. Um, and so I just would, would encourage you to consider that. So this time, um, let me just kind of say a, a prayer, and then I'll ask our worship team to come up while I'm praying. So, Father, we do thank you for uh, what you, the things that you've shown us um, through our time in Honduras. Lord, we pray that uh, those things would uh, be evidenced in our lives as we continue to, to think through and, and uh, ponder what you've done and what you've taught us, the things that we've seen. Lord, help each of us here each day to be aware of the things around us. Not just when we're on a mission trip or on a special trip. Help us to be observant of uh, the people around us and the opportunities around us that you give us and the ways that you're trying to, to mold us and, and make us into your image and into uh, a greater reflection of who you are. We just ask now that you'd be glorified in our time of singing and worship. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.